and okay, we've got the recording started. So thank you everyone for joining. Today we are going to be talking about Sage Intelligence and how to create new reports using Sage Intelligence reporting. And what I want to do is we're going to be um, talking a little bit about what Sage Intelligence is and then I'm going to give um, an example of the flow of Sage Intelligence. And of course, this is for those of you who have not seen Sage Intelligence before, and we want to give you a good background to understand what we're working on today. Now, creating new reports, I'm going to walk through how to do it with the report designer add-in and also how to create a report um, in uh, Report Manager. But uh, for for their, those of you who are looking to um, uh, watch the webcast that where you can create your own container, that's in another webcast uh, and that we have um, already recorded and we're going to be recording those again. So uh, today we'll be using it, uh, the existing containers and you'll know, everyone will know exactly what I'm talking about uh, during the webcast. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so what is Sage Intelligence? Well, Sage Intelligence is a reporting tool. It's an Excel-based reporting tool. It's a single investment, so you don't need to have separate tools, one for um, financial reporting, one for operational reporting. You really just have the one tool where you can create reports yourself, use the existing reports that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. And it opens up into Excel because Excel is the universal um, application, if you will, for analysis, and that's what we want to do. We want to. We don't just want to create reports. We want to analyze our data that's already in our systems today. And you can do that using Sage Intelligence because Sage Intelligence is uh, connected to your ERP modules, all of the modules and databases. So we're pulling information in from your ERP so that you can report on it. So you can print, uh, um, it pushes the data out to Excel so that you can analyze the data and make decisions. Now, we also um, make the connection to additional sources, so additional databases outside the ERP. So not only uh, does Sage Intelligence come shipped with the connection to um, the, the Sage ERP, 100, 300, 500, X3, but we also enable you to make connections to other databases, data sources outside the ERP. So for example, other SQL databases, maybe CRM, Sage CRM, or maybe you have information or data within a um, Excel file. Well, you can make that connection as well. And Sage Intelligence comes with predefined financial and operational uh, reports. And of course, there's always the security and additional level of security with Sage Intelligence, and you can even set permissions at the report level. So let's take a look at the standard reports. We have many. We have a few dashboard analysis reports. We have a few customer sales reports, inventory and vendor purchase reports, and then of course our financial and consolidated financial reports. These are all pre-configured for you. Um, we have our GL transactions and our trend analysis reports, and then of course the financial designer and the consolidated financial designer, and that's where you can create your reports, and that's where we're going to be working uh, today. So. Um, lots of reports that come standard with Sage Intelligence. These are, again, reports that you can run at the click of a button. You can look at your financials. You can look at your inventory and vendor purchase. You can look at all kinds of information. And these reports are already pre-created. However, you can, uh, you can modify and edit these reports and save them to uh, Report Manager. Let's talk just a little bit about how it works. For those of you who are new to Sage Intelligence, what we do is we start on the left-hand side with the databases. The databases are um, pictured as a, a silver cylinders to the left. And again, these are multiple data sources. They're your Sage ERP, which uh, Sage Intelligence comes shipped with connections to your Sage ERP modules. There's, it can also be other uh, SQL databases uh, and other information. Sage Intelligence uh, includes the modules of the connector and report manager. And the connector is the one that makes the connection to all of the databases. Report manager is the authoring tool 
and the authoring tool means that's where you run your reports out. That's where you'll set your parameters, your, your filters, aggregate aggregate the information as well within your report so that when it runs out, it's the report that runs out is simply that data that you wish to, to use and, and format and view within Excel. Now again, uh, con Connector makes the connection to all the databases. It, it, it holds the pathway to each of your tables and it holds all of the fields that you're going to uh, push to Excel and, and all of those columns that you're going to view in Excel. Report Manager, again, is where you set your parameters and filters, and Excel is the is what we use to uh, display the template. It's the Excel template that shows all of the data that you're um, that you're viewing, that you're, you can edit in Excel. You can use all of the Excel, 100% of Excel functionality uh, with, with your report. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at Sage Intelligence. And so what I've done is this is Sage 300 Intelligence Reporting, the 2014 version, which will be coming out soon. Now I've got Sage 300 open. There's also, uh, this looks um, almost identical to Sage 100, um, the Sage 50, Sage and X3 and so forth. There's the functionality is all the same. The look might be just uh, a, a hair different, but I wanted to show this is the 2014 version, and this is the um, this is the new format of the ribbon. Okay, let's talk a little bit about Report Manager and what we're looking at. So again, this is the authoring tool. This is the tool where all of the reports are stored, and you can see them listed on the left here. So we have our consolidated designer reports, our financial reports, and there are a few reports. So for those of you who are already familiar with Sage Intelligence, there are a few new reports that are coming, a ratios report, a forecasting report. So lots of reports to help you with your um, financial reporting. Of course, our uh, dashboard reports, and then you'll notice designer. For those of you who currently use report uh, Sage Intelligence Reporting, you'll have a Report Designer add-in folder. We've combined the Report Designer add-in and the Designer folders here in 2014. And that's coming very, very soon. So this is the Designer folder. And then I have uh, created a few folders here myself. And it's, it's very easy to create a folder. I simply select the Home button, add a folder right here. That's how, how simple it is. Right-click, add a folder. I can also um, highlight the Home button and add a folder by clicking this Add a Folder button. So let's look at my reports here. What I've done is I've made a copy of our Demonstration Designer uh, report, which is this first one right here. And I've gone ahead and, and um, run it out so that we can, I can show you the, the functionality and I can show you some other things and so that we'll have time to look at everything. And, and by the way, we'll have time at the end of this webcast for questions in the chat pane. So feel free to enter a question. I probably won't be able to answer it until the very end, but I will be um, uh, also showing some resource and uh, other information, how to contact me and so forth. So if you don't get your question in today, we'll, we will be able to handle your question. Okay, so I've opened up. This is my copy of my demonstration report designer add-in report. And this is just something I created quickly to, um, so that we can walk through what I've created, and then I'm going to show you how I created it. But I also want to show you these tabs at the bottom. These are the pre-configured reports, the sample reports that we're, we've included. So this is a, the balance sheet. You see your parameters here at the top, and you see the nice formatting. And of course, it's all within Excel. Now you notice the task pane over here on the right. The task pane is that drag and drop that enables you to create these reports yourself from scratch. So we have our lists, we have our formulas here. You see all of your actual, actual year to date opening and closing balances. For those of you who use trees, we have trees that can be added. And then of course, uh, your, your uh, ah, skip the list, and then of course your lists right here. And, and had this been a consolidated report, I would simply be able to select this button and see a list of all of my companies, and I can choose the company. So I can drag, I can select a company, company, and then I can drag my lists and formulas according to that particular company. 
So you can create your own consolidated report as well. So the other tabs, we have an income statement, we have um, trial balance summaries, cash flow. Um, oh, notice the cash flow here with, we have some charts. So a uh, nice graph that shows your cash flow versus prior. And then cash flow details. So quite a few reports here. You don't have to use them. Once you make a copy, you can delete all of these reports if you want. And of course, just show your own. So this is my SAM limited income statement. And I just selected the plus button so I could start fresh on a brand new screen. Now this is for, this is again in Excel. And again, we're just going to start this from scratch. So what I want to do first of all, you remember in some of the samples that I, I just showed you in the other tabs, we had what's called parameters. And in order um, to be able to create our uh, in order to create our report, we need to use parameters, and we need these parameters for our formulas. All right, so that's, I'm just typing the parameter headings in here. And what I'll do is I'll go to the task pane over here on the right. I'm going to select formulas, and here's where the drag and drop capability comes in. I'm going to drag the company name, the current period, and the current year. So I'm simply grabbing those items, coming over and dropping them onto Excel spreadsheet. And these are the parameters that I'm going to use. And you can see the formula right in here. These are Sage Intelligence formulas uh, used from the add-in over here, this Excel add-in, which is also called the task pane. Okay, so I have my um, parameters there. Now what I need to do is I need some lists. So I have my accounts my groups, my segments. I have all kinds of lists here. Again, this is the 300, but the 500 is almost identical. Uh, you know, your, the 500 and, and others will have um, different account numbers, probably different company names in their demo data. So what I've done is I've simply dragged my account list over. So you see all of my accounts here. I can open up if I highlight all the columns like that, I can open them all up pretty easy and see my account numbers, my account description, my structure code, account type. This is account group name and category name. And a lot of these are used for, for grouping. So you can simply use the, um, if I want to group them, I can go up here to data and I can group or ungroup and subtotal based on these names. Okay, but what I'm going to do is just show you quickly how to create a, um, an income statement, let's say. I'm not going to use some of these columns, so let's see, I'll go ahead and delete these co columns, and I'm going to leave, I'm going to go ahead and leave the group name so I know what I'm looking at here. And then if I'm going to do an income statement, everything comes over, so I'm going to simply delete all of the um, uh, balance sheet accounts. Okay, so now I have just what I want to do to create a very simple income statement. So again, I'm just creating a report here. What I want to do is start, well, I'll go ahead and put in a title. And then what I need to do is bring over a formula. And so I t put in actual, so I'm going to bring over the actual formula. And you know what? What I think I'm going to do is I want to show it um, by different periods. So what I, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Control Shift Plus button, okay, and I'm going to add another couple of rows there. Again, that's Control Shift Plus, a little cheat sheet there. Or, um, and then I'm going to, let's say I'm going to use Excel, I'm going to say equals, and I'm going to use this particular uh, field for my current period, and I'm going to set that up right there. And that might be just a title, I'm going to say it's period two. And this period, what I want to do is I'm going to type in equals, and I'm going to say I'm going to use this particular cell, but I want it to change as the columns change, so I'm going to hit F4 twice, and so that I have the dollar sign in between the column and the row. And then I just press Enter. 
whoops, sorry, I forgot one thing, <laughs> plus 1. There's a reason for doing the formula. And so what that does is that enables me to go ahead and if I want, I can, let's say I want to do a few, um, a few, uh, well, that didn't work, so let's see if I can, it is, um, I actually did B3, it's supposed to be, silly me, D6, again, F4 twice, again, plus one, see, it makes a difference, so, um, what I've done is I've, the first period here highlights my current period. This next column is going to highlight the second period of whatever's in this uh, column plus one. Drag it out, and there we go. So we have, we have our headings. All right, so again, I have dragged my actual formula onto the uh, cell into the cell that I want to start my work. And here you can see the formula up here in the formula bar. But we need to add to it, okay? We need to make sure that oh, it's pulling in all the correct information. And so I'm going to uh, I'm going to assign the account number and here I'm going to press F4 three times once to fix the row in the column, twice to fix the row and three times to fix the column. I'm going to just do it once for this year up here because I want it to fix right on that particular year. And then uh, actually, usually I would um, press F4 once and, and highlight this particular period, but I want to start here and press F4 twice because I want it to fix on the row. And then there we have our number pulled in. And again, this is the number assigned to this particular um, account number for this particular year and period. Just get the plus sign and fill in the rest of the the rows. And you'll notice the revenue comes in as negative. Well, that's easily fixed. That's just what happens. What I'm going to do is put my cursor in the formula bar. And you notice when I do that, it lights up all of what is included in the formula. And it's color coordinated. It might look different to you on um, WebEx, but you'll see that the blue is the account number, the next one's red is the year, and purple is the period. Okay, so I'm simply going to put a minus sign in front of the formula, press enter, and that changes it to a positive number, and I just want to drag that down because I want all my revenue accounts to show the positive number. And there we have it. Okay, so now what we want to do is we have our number for period two, but I don't want to sit here and type in and do the same formula for each of the other periods. What I'm going to do is highlight all of them. And again, you can uh, shift control plus, uh, wait a minute, shift control down arrow, and it can highlight all of your rows at the same time. I'm doing it the slow way. I'm going to the very bottom, and then I'm going to drag it over like so. Voila. These are all of your numbers for all of your periods. Let's see, I'm going to open these up a little bit more. And then there we have all of our numbers for all of our periods. Again, I'm just going to do a little formatting here. What I like to do is, there we go. There we go. So I just want to center them and bold them a little bit. Okay, so we have that data. And let's say we want to look at, uh, let's look at, uh, sorry, let me go back to formulas here and do um, actual year to date, or I could also do budget if I want. Same thing, year to date. Just uh, work on the same um, formula here. assign the year and the period. Again, I'm just selecting F4 once for the year and the period. We have the number. Again, I'm going to double click. And again, for the revenue, I just simply highlight all of them. And then they're all positive. So that's year to date. So 
what you want to do is I, I could put in, um, a, you know, insert a column here for formatting. What you don't want to do, though, is you want, when you're doing, oh, I've misspelled this, <laughs> actual, when you are entering any of these formulas, you want to make sure that your um, columns are together so that you, when you get the plus sign, you can simply double click and it'll fill in the row. If, the if there's a space between columns, you're, the plus sign uh, fill series is not going to work. So you want to go ahead and set that up and then maybe you can insert a column afterwards and uh, change the formatting and make it look, make the report look a lot better. Okay, so now we have all of our um, rows here, but it's quite a few. I want to group them. Now again, we can use the account group name and we can use Excel to group. What I want to do though is make it really simple. And I want to group all of our revenue, or at least our, our general re revenue. And I know it's 40,000. What I'm going to do is control shift plus and add. I'm just going to call it sales. And I know it's 40,000 to uh, plus 4199. Okay, and then I simply type in the r range of those accounts. I copy the formulas up, and these are my numbers for the accounts 41 to 90, 4199. And then once I've done that, I want to delete all of my revenue. Let's just say that's sales. So I delete all of those. And then for other revenue, let's I can also work within the account number here and just say 4200 to 4299, for example. When I press Enter, notice these numbers change. It's adding them all up. This is Sage Intelligence grouping them for you. See, then you want to uh, whoops, just delete them, not cut them. And then if you want to insert some rows, just say total uh, revenue, and you say, um, use Excel functionality to sum your data. Okay, and then we have cost of sales. I'm going to go ahead and just use this one to 50, 50. Now then I know that there's also a range. So if I know there's two more um, accounts. There's, uh, I think it's 5,500 and there is 5,600 that are not in the range, but I want them picked up as well. So I just simply select OK, and those numbers get picked up. And I can delete all of my cost of sales here. And then I think the other two, yep, 5,500 and 5,600 are right here. I can delete those as well. And then I have um, my gross profit is a simple Excel calculation. And this is all elementary to you all, I'm sure, but I simply want to show the range functionality. Here, um, other expenses is, let's see, 5,400, and I believe it's to 6,280. And then I am just going, there's a few more, but what I want to do, see like for example, I could take 6560 out, but in lieu of time, what I want to do is just delete my expenses, other expenses, and I just have other 7100 to 7299. And then I'll just say, I know there's income tax here too. Don't tell on me, but I'm going to just do all of these for other expenses. I can change 
the name of them as well if I choose. But you get the idea. So we'll just say total expenses. And again, summarize, drag over. Now it's simply formatting. So you have your uh, you have your basic income statement. You've got your periods here. You can go in and you can change the the periods if you want. So if I put a three there, notice since I set my formulas up very quickly. By the way, I set them up, and here I can change. Uh, the periods, just like that. So I can start with four, I can start with two, and the numbers were changed so you can see it dynamically. Uh, let's say that you um, don't want to worry about doing that, but you want to hide uh, those and maybe put in a, a title for Sam Limited. You can simply do, let's start here, a title, Merge and Center. Let's bold it, make it bigger, and we can leave that there. Uh, and other, other things you can, if you want to, you know, change the look of it, maybe have an outline, draw a border around it, any, any any opportunity or option that you want to do from a uh, formatting standpoint, you can do that. Very simple. But here's the um, here's the way it could finally look. And again, remember we have balance sheets and income statements, really prettier ones than I created that you can use as well. And again, if you make a copy of the report, you can make any changes to. Uh, this report that you need, just remember to go back to Report Manager, and I'll do that now, and you want to save it. So this is the, the report that I made, that I created, and I simply want to save Excel template. Now, this is the 2014 version, and um, the existing version is going to say create and link your template. All right, so I do want to make that, that difference. You can e either select it using the right-click menu, or uh, select it from, from the ribbon. Okay, so that's creating a report using Report Designer add-in, but what if you don't want to create a financial report? What if you're good with that? Let's go ahead and talk about creating a report using Report Manager. Now again, these are using the existing containers that are shipped with Sage Intelligence. Now these containers are in uh, the connector, and the connector is another module, and it basically the container is just the path again to the the source to your data source, and that path is um, contains the fields and expressions that you wish to report on. So uh, what? But so what we're going to do is since Sage Intelligence is shipped with those containers, we're going to go ahead <clears throat> and just uh, use the ones that are shipped. So what I'm going to do first is I've highlighted this this folder that I've created. Again, you go to Home, select Add Folder, or you can right-click and add a folder, and then type in the name, and uh, this is this is what you get. So what I'm going to do is, you know what, I think I might just use this folder. I'm going to right-click on my New Reports folder, and I'm going to add a report. Now when I do that, it comes up with three choices, standard, union, or cube. The standard report means it's just one report. Union means it's two reports combined to make up one. So a report is associated with one container, and if you have several tables within each container and you want to use data from each of those tables, you'd use a uh, union report, and you would union the two containers together, and uh, excuse me, union the two reports together. Um, a cube report is for another um, uh, a webcast. We're not going to be talking about those today. But I'm going to select a standard report first. Notice it comes up with, it asks me to uh, create a name. And what I want to do, I want to create a report to look at my customers. So just say report customers. And it, when I select OK, it immediately comes up with a list of all the containers. These are the containers, again, that are shipped with Sage Intelligence, and these containers are used by the reports that are pre-configured 
for you to use. Okay, so if I'm going to use my, my uh, customer report, let's say I want to use my, where is it, sales master. This is my order entry and my invoices uh, data. So this is um, the sales master container that contains data from these modules. I'll select OK. When I select OK, it allows me to choose my column fields. This is a list of all the fields. And I can be selective, choose one or two. I'm going to go ahead and just select all and select OK. Now I've created a report, or at least I've created the report in, in Report Manager. Now what I need to do is if I, need to, if I want to add filters, I can. If I want to add a, and that means to filter out certain data here for in, when it opens up into Excel, or I can create a parameter. And what that means is my, I can give my user the option to filter by year, by uh, whatever um, information you have in here. They can uh, filter it on their own. I would set it up for them as the uh, author of the report. But let's look at the properties here. I don't have a report template, and I wouldn't until I run it out into Excel, and I save that report template that I create in Excel. When I come back here and save the report using the Save Excel template, I'll have um, the report template path right here. It'll tell me where it's located and that it's actually saved. So I'm going to go ahead and run it out right now to Excel and what it's doing is it's basically uh, looking at those containers that I have uh, that I that I selected and it's going in it's pulling all of the data uh, from uh, the um, say the ERP and it's going to push all of the data out into uh, Microsoft Excel and once it does that it's really going to dump all of the data to Microsoft Excel and, and then I'll, I'll take that data and I'll do whatever I want to with it from a formatting standpoint. Okay, and I was, uh, let's see, this is taking a little time to do, it usually doesn't take uh, very long. Uh, there we go, so this one's um, working better. I need to kind of leave my Excel alone. <laughs> anyway, okay, so it's opened up into a report. Basically what it's done is it's dumped all of the data within the container that I chose. So this is the sales master. So these are all the, the data and associated columns that you saw earlier. Now I'll select sheet two and I'll show you these are the parameters. So if I, um, the parameter information. So if I added anything, a parameter filter or anything like that, it's going to show up here. Okay. Now again, we can't really do a lot with this. Well, we could, but let's let's make it easy. I'm going to go to sheet three here, and I'm going to insert a pivot table. All right. So I need to select a table or a range, and I want to use one of the existing ones. So I'm just going to go down here and select sheet one. And when it it, it inputs sheet one pound sign. I want to type in raw data because I want to make sure that it's going to, if any of this data changes another time in the ERP, when I rerun it, I want it to capture those changes. So type in raw data. You can also type F3 and you can select raw data right here. Okay, I've already typed it in, so I don't want, don't want to do that. Now I've selected existing worksheet. I want it in sheet three, because remember sheet two has the parameters, and this is the cell in which I, I started, so I just select OK, and there's my pivot table. It's easy as that. I have my table. If I put my cursor within the table, I see all of the fields I can use. Now I want to report on my customers, so let's just say it'd be nice just to start with a customer name. When I select customer name, it puts it down here in the row grid, and if I just, let's say, line them out. Line them out automatically goes to a value. So this is information I can I can use. So these are, uh, this is a list of all my customers and their line amounts. And, you know, I can format this. I can change the title here. I can also change, um, well, let's see. I can change the value. So let's say, um, Maybe not top 10, let's do top 8, select OK. And then I start thinking about it. I think, you know, I want to look at my customers, but I also want to look at my vendors. I'm concerned about both. You know what I want to do is I want to hang on to this, but I want to create another report. And I want to add 
a standard report, and I want to, this is for my vendors. So if I say um, report underscore vendors, select OK, and find the purchase master. So I want to look at my vendors. These are the columns or the fields that I want to use. Just select OK, and then I can run it out. Let's see if um, there is one little uh, and Excel's happy this time. So, well, not quite. I need to look at what I my change and reverse it so I can get have Excel run out properly. These images, we're always uh, playing with them, so uh, don't try to playing with it at home. <laughs> okay, so we have our our purchase manager report. We actually have two reports now um, open. We have our purchases report and then our customers report. So again, all of the information was dumped into Sheet 1. Sheet 2 is the parameters, and Sheet 3, I'm just going to go quickly over this because we just did it. But what I want to do is just create a pivot table for my vendors. And if I select Sheet 1, type in raw data, I want to push it to the existing worksheet, Sheet 3, where I was just landing. And then for my vendors, um, I want to look at my supplier name. Let's see, supplier name and quantity. That's what I want to look at, my quantity. And there I can see my supplier by quantity. Again, here I can say vendors. Whoops. Okay. I want to be able to type in vendors. And then I want to, you know, I want to change. I want to sort. That's what I want to do. I want to sort in descending order, not on supplier name. I want to know the quantity. And there we have it. And, you know, this time I just want to see my top five. Okay. So I'm good with that. So this is a report I can use from now on. Uh, but I can't really use it until I go back to Report Manager and save it. I haven't saved this one yet, uh, or at least the template that I created in Excel, but I can this one. So I can simply select Save Excel Template, and the vendors was Book 3, so I select OK. And that's actually a, a good point. Here I'm going to select the format for it, the Excel Template, is if you have several Excel books open, then it's going to be hard for you to remember which report was which for the book. So it's a good idea just to do one at a time. Okay, now I have my customer report. I have my vendor report. And what I want to do now is um, I want to go ahead and I, I want to look at both of them. I want to pull the data for vendors and the data for customers into a new report. So what I'll do then is select Add Report and select Union Report. And let's just call this Customers and Vendors. Select OK. Let's see, I have, I, I name them the way I name them for a reason. Report underscore customers, there it is. Report underscore vendors, there it is. And again, you can see all of the other reports. These are all the pre-configured reports or any reports that I've created are all listed here because you can union any of them. So there I've unioned those, select OK, and then I'm going to run it out. So and actually, I there's one thing that I do want to do, and that is... Um, I'll go ahead and let it run out. Is the the when you when you union two reports, I'm going to cancel this because when you union two reports, and remember I was saying that the reports would push the data to sheet one. Well, in this case, I have two reports. It's going to push the data to sheet one and to sheet two. I don't want that. I want the parameters on sheet two. I want it to push the data to um, to different sheets. So if you look at 
if I open up the report and I go to the properties for report customers, here it is pushing the data to sheet one, but the vendors are as well. I want to change that, so I right-click, select properties. Uh, it's down here in the corner. And I simply change that from sheet one to sheet two and select OK. Oh, sorry, I mean uh, sheet three. There we go. On all right. We have the data pushing for customers to sheet one, the data for vendors to sheet three. And now when I run it out, that's what will happen. All of the data for uh, the customers will be pushed um, into sheet one, and you can see it uh, populating there, and then all of the data for the um, other is into sheet three. And again, that's so that we can have our parameters. So let's say I set a parameter, I want it for only a certain year, or only certain customers, or um, I want the user to select which customer they want to look at because they don't, they, um, uh, don't want to look at all of them. Okay, I'll give that, I selected cancel quite a few times, and with my current issue, it's going to take a little bit for, say, for um, Excel to run. But here we have our sheet one, we have our sheet three, and we have our sheet two with all of our uh, parameters. So again, with, with looking at these parameters, they would uh, also include one of the um, parameters that I might have set within uh, Report Manager. So I, it, in order to, I can't stop this uh, hourglass here, but in order to continue with uh, creating a report, you would simply build um, two different pivot tables, one for customers, one for um, vendors. like so, like we've done in this case. But with uh, the other report, you'd be able to pull um, a quick pivot table using vendors. So once the, your report has been created, it's uh, what you need to do is come back to Report Manager again in order to create a template, you want to simply um, select Save Excel Template. Now again, this is in Sage Intelligence Reporting 2014. There's also the ability um, to save the template in earlier versions, but that's going to be called uh, Create and Link a Template. So always remember to create and link a template anytime you create a new report within uh, Sage Intelligence. Now, additionally, as I said in the very beginning of the presentation, that there is the ability to um, create new reports using Report Manager, but if you need to create additional containers, that's going to be covered in another webcast. And we do have some webcasts and videos online um, that can show you how to do that. And what I'll do is I'll take you back to the presentation, and as promised, go through some of the resources that we have available. Now the resources here are sageintelligencecommunity.com. You can also go to sageintelligence.com and that's where you can access the community. And on the community we have videos, we have downloads, we have videos on how to create a report using Report Designer. It's the Report Designer add-in for the newest version coming out. It's Report Designer. It's just the Designer folder. So we have videos on all of that, old versions, new versions, to help you get started uh, creating a report from scratch as well as creating a report from Report Manager. We also have Excel on steroids. We have all kinds of classes and resources. So if you're concerned about uh, not being up on Excel, which I'm sure all of you are all uh, experts then um, definitely take a look at the uh, Excel on steroids class. And then we have our YouTube learning channel with all kinds of videos available. And as always, Sage University is our instructor-led training. That's by, uh, it's led by professional trainers. It's uh, accessed at SageU. 
you have your own workstation. The trainers are looking over your shoulder, watching what you do, giving you exercises, as well as showing you how to use Sage Intelligence. And it's different levels from beginning to advanced. So I highly recommend uh, taking a look at Sage University. My name is Sandra Smith. You can reach me at sandra.smith at sage.com if you have any questions. I'm going to hang on uh, for the next few minutes. I just gave um, a uh, only a few minutes in this webcast for questions, but I will hang on um, uh, terminating only after all of the questions have been answered. So that is the uh, concludes uh, the presentation and the demonstration for creating reports using Sage Intelligence. If you have any questions, please do so. Please use the chat pane, and thank you all for joining.